Hello, Asa, and welcome to part one of my clockwork series, because I'm trying to get on with that. But for now, I'm just going to go through some of the theory and the design work I'm doing, uh, seeing as I haven't bought plywood yet, and that's kind of the big thing I'm stuck on. Homemade paper. The point of this video is to be an introduction to um, a series, a playlist on the clock I am building and the process which I'm following. Um, and this is my notebook where I get an idea for, say, a mechanism or how I want a couple mechanisms to interact, and I take some notes on it. But I figured I'd just show it off and, well, I guess explain this page, because this is more or less uh, the page I am working on for the final clock design. Later, of course, we'll get into all the minutiae of how, like, you know, this mechanism works and why I find it cool, and this is how I made it, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but for now, I suppose I can just talk about the clock itself. This here is kind of a block layout of how I want uh, the clock to work out. These numbers here are uh, seconds per rotation. So basically, if I have a wheel, how many seconds will it take for it to rotate completely once? Um, the design so far is to have an escapement coming in that'll rotate once every 60 seconds or once every minute for everyone paying attention. This is a block to represent what will be gears. And then I'll have an hour and a minute hand, which rotate correspondingly, you know, 3,600 seconds for a minute and 43,200 for a rotation of an hour hand. That doesn't mean that's how many are in a minute. It's that times 60 because the minute hand rotates once per hour. In the middle is the equation of time, which is essentially just, well, the sun isn't always at noon when we're at noon. We set our normal times so that way. It's consistent and every day is the same length, but because the earth wobbles and rotates in an ellipse, this is definitely not the truth. This is kind of a way to correct for it. And then we'll have an output to a sundial, which will basically be moving at half the speed of an hour hand. So if it's noon, solar noon, it'll be up here. If it's midnight, it'll be down here and it'll rotate all around um, throughout the day. I will also have a celestial or a, a planisphere plate. I don't know if you've ever used one of these. I'll make a video on that as well. Suffice to say that uh, this will be telling you which star is uh, at the zenith point and which are hidden and then based on that in the sundial you could basically be like oh which stars can i go outside and see today and then the moon will show where the moon is in the sky so it'll show you if it's up if it's up like this it'll be saying that the moon is as high in the sky as it'll get that day and this means you won't see it at all and depending on the difference between the sun and the moon hand you will be able to tell uh, the phase of the moon is. So if this is the moon hand and this is the sun hand and they're both up, it'll be a new moon because you're here on earth looking up and you won't see any light reflected. If it's like this, it'll be a full moon because all of the earth's, uh, the sun's light will be shining across it to the moon and reflecting back to earth. And here will be like half moon and yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. The point of all this is to eventually fit in a clock face that will look something like this. Indeed, indeed. Oh dear. Those aren't circles. Oh, I have this written in a notebook. The goal for all this is that it will look something like this when it is all done. This would be the sun hand. This would be the moon hand. This plate, which consists of both the stars and also the months around the edge, is the planisphere. Uh, and the fun thing too about that is because uh, they shift by, w the sun makes one less rotation per year than the planisphere disk, is that you can track the time of year by the difference between them, just like we're using the difference between the moon and the sun hand to track the phase of the moon. This oval here just tells you what's in the sky, so uh, depending on your latitude, the oval will be slightly different shaped, but basically if a star is in here, then it'll be in the sky at that time, and of course the sun will want to be down below, so that way it's nighttime, you could go out and see it. Then of course around the outside you will have the standard hour and minute hand on uh, my plan currently is to have them separate so you wouldn't have the hand going all the way to the center it'd be kind of behind uh all these what the, they're called astronomical complications because clock makers can't use simple words and also i guess it's an old profession so it makes sense anyways uh, sorry for the weird video that's all i got for today hopefully this was vaguely interesting hopefully this makes people excited enough that they'll leave comments in my future videos saying levi you promised you'd do clock things and now you're not and Asa, thank you for watching this video. I will see you on Friday.